There are many factors that can shape how well your immune system can stop pathogens from establishing an infection and shape the disease course for infections. We will review positive and negative social influences in human infections. First, a caveat. This is a relatively new scientific focus, which is coming out with novel insights on a daily basis. Here's what we've learned so far. Let's start with the positives. A popular finding for the past decade has been the robust, powerful, positive influence of social networks on health. Let's quickly review what a social network is. Social networks are people tied to each other, such as through familial, emotional, or economic ties. As discussed in other videos, contact networks, being in physical proximity of another person, can also have strong influences on disease transmission. Here, we're discussing social networks, like friends and family. A mechanism behind the positive effects of social networks on immunity and disease course is social support. Social support comes in two major forms, instrumental and emotional. Instrumental support refers to task-related help, such as getting information or providing tangible resources. Emotional support refers to helping people to manage their feelings, including making someone feel loved or valued. So how does it work? People who maintain larger, more diverse social networks have advantages in gaining access to resources or new information to manage a health condition. They can access more instrumental support. They can also access more emotional support and may have a better chance of accessing the kind of emotional support they need in a particular stressful situation. Positive emotional support can help people to regulate how long they feel and how deeply they feel affective states like despair. This results in greater motivation to care for oneself and results in suppressed neuroendocrine response as well as enhanced immune function. The belief that others will provide necessary resources can also bolster one's ability to cope with life's challenges, which can lower their stress. Let's take HIV for example. Studies have shown that higher social support predicts slower disease progression to AIDS, less rapid decline in CD4 cells, slower symptom onset, and longer survival. From another perspective, the lack of social support has been linked to faster declines in CD4 count, to development of more symptoms among those with the same CD4 counts, and to shorter survival. Social networks may provide positive emotional support. Unfortunately, they can also provide negative experiences, such as exploitation, isolation, loneliness, and conflict. The main mechanism behind negative experiences and poor immune functioning is stress. Stress impacts immunity by promoting behavioral coping responses detrimental to health, such as smoking, drinking alcohol, or losing sleep, or by activating physiological stress symptoms that depress or dysregulate immune functioning. These stress reactions can also accelerate infection progression. For example, research shows that some stress hormones accelerate HIV-1 replication by as much as 11-fold in particular blood cells. Social stressors associated with physical stress responses include loneliness, marital disruption, bereavement, ostracism, and stigmatization. Many infectious diseases are stigmatized. Stigmatization can itself lead to loneliness, relationship strain, and ostracism. The costs of social stressors on immunity and disease course may be difficult to match with the positive benefits of social support. Social support and social stressors are two social influences on immunity and disease course in humans, as well as other social living species. Social dynamics may complement or complicate efforts to support immune functioning. As I said in the beginning, research into the social influences on immunity and disease is relatively new. There is much left to discover.